Ed DeRosa back with you at HRNHQ. Restreaming with Sarah Albadwi is a few minutes north, and we had so much fun, Sarah, talking about the Breeders' Cup Classic. How could we not talk about the distaff after seeing the displays Nest and Malathot put on this past weekend? How could we not? I mean, I feel like it's kind of the other big race, of course, the Philly and Mare division of the Classic for those uh, older and you know, some of the three-year-olds joining as well, as we saw after the performance from Nest. Um, I mean, and you teased this stat that you have that's just going to change the world. So I can't wait to hear it. It is. And I am going to get to that after I ask you this question, because I don't want to forget. And I feel once we get into the stat, I might. Does the fact that the two big names, and there's other bigger names, but I mean, Nest and Malathot, Malthot's already a champion, probably will be again with a good performance, depending on what Clarier does. Nest will be champion three-year-old Philly, unless Secret Oath runs off the screen. Um, but they're the showdown, but they're both trained by Todd Pletcher. Does that take anything away from this for you? I have a hard time calling it a rivalry when they're in the same barn. Um, I don't really see it as him having an impact on what's going to happen in this race because it is for two different connections. It's not as though they're going out for the same barn. And I think that they too, um, neither of them need to be on the lead early. They both can sit off and make their own trips. I don't think that him training both of them compromises either's chance in this race. Uh, I do. I mean, I agree with that. And, you know, I think Todd has a, a pretty good record of him wanting his owners to succeed. And he's going to give both the, the chance to do that. I just do think, oh, it's trained by the same guy. I, I don't know. In my head, it's like, eh, it's not quite the same as if one of them were trained by Chad Brown or, you know, with Lucas where Nest and Secret Oath quasi had a rivalry until, you know, Nest kind of buried that in the Alabama you know, that that to me was more than than this because it's the same trainer, but very much looking forward to actually seeing who's better because I actually don't know. I think they're both very good and I'm looking forward to finding out. Well, I think um, Nick Tamaro kind of tipped his hat of which one that he'll uh, be making the favorite going into oh, the Breeders' Cup. This I missed half. that. Do tell. Oh, well, it's not Nest. Well, uh, then Nick will be very much in agreement with the stat I'm about to share. Okay. Unveil the red carpet. Let's go. Since 1991, which is as far back as, as our database goes here, since 1991 in the Breeders' Cup distaff, if you had bet every non-three-year-old, you'd be ahead. Because of Marche Lorraine? Uh, that and Adoration uh, back in 03. But I, I just think uh, to me, that's incredible that, I mean, just indiscriminately that every four-year-old and up. Now, where the to me, where things like that do fall apart is I don't think you go into any one year with that plan. So no one is ever doing that, especially going as far back as 91. But it does speak to how overbet I think three-year-olds are in the distaff. Silver Bullet Day is the name I go back to. I'm sure there's a few others. I didn't actually go through the charts. I just queried the age. But uh, to me, Nest is going to be overbet. Even overbet, if she's not the favorite. Overbet, sure. But if you look at how three-year-olds have performed in the distaff, you're also taking into consideration that a lot of those older horses that are inflating that flat bet profit were huge prices that kind of upset the field. Uh, Marche Lorraine, obviously, last year being one of them. Three-year-olds have won and performed well in the distaff. I mean, you have Beholder, you had Royal Delta, you had plenty of other untappable other three-year-olds that were winning this race in that time span. So maybe they were short prices and it doesn't help that flat bet profit. But it's not as though they're without a prayer, like they might be in some other races with younger horses facing older. And uh, just I ran it again because I wanted the ac actual number. Um, and because it goes this far back, we don't have impact. Um, that starts in 2014. So that that's why I don't have that neat graphic we usually have. Uh, Ten three-year-olds have won going back to 1991. Uh, only five since 03, though. Uh, and the ROI takes a huge drop 
uh, after 03. So I'm not sure if, you know, maybe more with more options on turf uh, since 99 with the Philly and Mare turf, if, if that was a factor or what. But uh, I don't know. I mean, like, like I just said, it's hard to use that as like, well, I'm not going to bet a three-year-old. But it does seem like it's fair to say they are over bet more often than not. I think it's a fun fact worth sharing, but I don't think it's going to change anybody's wagering opinion going into this race. Uh, yeah, that that's probably true. I mean, if you're if you're a Nest believer, this is a chance to get her at three to one instead of two to five. So, right. So, are you on the team Nest or team Malfat or somebody else? Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be on team somebody else. And Just who might that be? With both of them taking money, it's it's hard to. I mean, what are they going to be two and three to one? It's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. Five to two and seven to two. Um, I do not have. Uh, uh, I was really hoping that Mora would, which like way back when, when they the spinster had been mentioned. Um, I would have loved to, to see her take a distaff path. I know we, you know, can disagree on whether the synthetic transfers or not. I was just excited about the price to find out. Uh, but now that obviously that went out the window anyway, once you pointed to the turf, but, um, I don't, I don't know where I'm going, but I just already have the feeling that these two Pletcher Phillies will be over bet. You don't know where you're going, but it's somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, but uh, I mean, other stuff can happen where, oh, you know, may, maybe the sexy alternative drew really poorly or, you know, people I trust are saying she doesn't look that great. And then all of a sudden, well, I can talk myself into Malathot at, you know, five to two. Because like Nest, here's an opportunity where normally she's in these races and you're getting four to five. Now all of a sudden you can get five to two, uh, you know, a Clarier and Jackie's warrior to, to fold in the sprint. But to me, they're kind of similar because those were disappointing performances last out. Uh, if you're willing to forgive both, you know, maybe now's the chance to get a price, a better price on either one of them. Do you have a name in mind? I think if Clarier ends up going and you can forgive and make some excuses for that performance last time, they're saying she's practiced in the gate, she hit her head, um, then I think that this is the time to get a good price on her because I think that she is uh, an improved horse from three to four. Um, but I, I think that I'll take a stand and say that I think that Nest is better than Malathot right now. Um, and I'm curious to see if Nick's right about this morning line favoritism <laughs> since he's already made it clear which one he uh, he is uh, rooting for and which camp he's in. Oh, so he's he's also rooting in addition to the – he has a Hello. as a handicapper, he has a choice too? Or he is not. I don't know if it went that in depth, but I just saw that he was saying already which one he was going to be making the morning line favorite. And you also kind of have to think that since he is a handicapper as well, he is considering, <laughs> you know, what his actual opinion is going into these races, too. Yeah. No, I, uh, you know, unfortunately missed the long shot last year, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if weren't for another. I, I mean, neither, it's not like either has run figures that, I don't want to say untouchable. I mean, flight line's kind of the only horse we've, we've seen in a while that is in that realm, but um, no, nah, I, I think it's a fantastic race. I mean, I would expect it to be right before the turf, um, you know, on the, on the Saturday lineup, like it, that's going to be a, a star power one, two, three, four punch, assuming modern games is in the mile or like goddess. Uh, I mean, this, this is pretty loaded with star power. Absolutely. And speaking of seeing those two performances this weekend from both Nest and Malathot, was there one specifically that you thought was better or more impressive? I think that they both kind of obviously demolished whoever was behind them, but I think it was also questionable a little bit for both of them in a way who was behind them. Right. Uh, I would, I would probably actually have to lean toward Nest just because given 
I'm pretty dubious of the, the, the depth behind them as you are in terms of, you know, are, are any of them behind them really grade one Breeders' Cup horses? Probably not. And Nest, I mean, she blew the doors off him where his mouth thought didn't. But, and, you know, you you watch with more of this eye than I do, so please correct me. But it, it seems like Malathot is not the type who's ever going to have that draw away win like we saw from Nest anyway. So I don't really want to hold that against her, that that's her type. I mean, even in the Oaks where she put away the, the Brown, whose name is escaping me. Um, Search results. Thank you. I mean, she never went away, but inside the eighth pole was like, okay, Malathot's winning. But it was never like never not totally not in doubt. So that's just her. Whereas Nest, you know, she put on the afterburners and uh, so vi visually, you know, that always gets the oohs and ahs open lengths, but I would still say Nest. I'm with you there. I, who do we think is going to be completing this field? Because uh, I mean, I feel like you and I both agree now that Latruska is not the same horse we saw last year. And she also didn't even make the lead um, in the race on Sunday, which was, right. you knew it was over from there, but it was obviously very clearly over and kind of has been for her this year. Um, if search results goes, I would assume that she's going to be a part of the early pace, but I mean, Malathot always finds a way to get past her. So um, besides those two and Clarier, if she makes it, I mean, who else do we think is going to be in this field? Are there any um, international contenders that you see lining up here too? Well, shame on me. I, I, I could not tell you who won the Zenyatta. Which was I don't I don't even know what it was because that's how out of touch I am with a uh, no and uh, racing. <laughs> like that that just I mean to me speaks to you know where the the talent in this division is like I mean Nest and Malathot raced four weeks out or even less twenty seven days away and lived up to the billing and they're going to be the top two choices uh, I would definitely expect. Some filler, it's Keeneland. People want tickets. The purse is big. I mean, you finish fifth, you're all right. There's some winning you're in. So, you know, why wouldn't you take advantage of that to come? But the, the fact that, yeah, and I think some would, well, it's, you know, your job to know who's won all these races, I, I would agree, closer to certainly. But to me, the organic nature of that that race did not even regis register uh I'm gonna have to look it up now, but I, mean, I just honestly. did. <laughs> uh, and Midnight Memory is a, another Baffert horse, so uh, okay. I, well. I think that kind of just speaks to the fact that the horses that we've seen at, at the top of this division have been more East Coast based this year. Yes, and uh, but I welcome uh, a Baffert runner because he certainly will take money. Is you know one of uh, the the known names and uh, a, a, a polarizing uh, favorite for some. So uh, you know if that. That makes uh, one of the Pletchers pay a, a few cents more, which we love penny breakage at the Breeders' Cup. So uh, get out those show parlays. But yeah, it, it's uh, it, this is a race where I'm really hoping there's something clever on, you know, a sheet or some workout or, you know, Clarier is third choice, maybe leanable because I do think flight line is invincible and, uh, you know, to have a two to five close out all the Maltese uh, on Breeders Cup day, you, you definitely, you know, hope that there's somewhere else you can separate. For sure. I'm, I'm with you on flight line, obviously being everybody's universal single. And uh, to me, I'm, I'm just hoping that he's healthy and makes it. And we see another spectacular performance like what we saw in the Pacific Classic. But you're going to have to find some sort of price elsewhere because the uh, the Nest Modern Games or Malathat <laughs> Modern Games flight line pick three is, uh, is not worth your time and energy. No. And uh, if they slot the turf in, so if the miles, the first leg of the pick four... But the tour, I mean, like Warlike Goddess and, you know, whoever comes from Europe will take money. Yeah, there, there's definitely a, a danger of a very short priced uh, sequence into flight line. But uh, thankfully, with the Breeders' Cup, we've, we've certainly seen our share of upsets, uh, including the distaff last year. So and a big part of that stat with, uh, you know, playing the non three year olds is more because of the long shots, probably not because they were older. But um, I, I still thought that was. Pretty interesting 
um, to, to bring it back to Nest, uh, who an underlay, but certainly would stamp herself as uh, one of the best this year of, of any division with a win. Definitely. And do you think that it's possible that with um, an open lengths win in the distaff, she ends up being a champion female? Oh, well, she'll be the, the three-year-old no matter what. Um, I could see her getting some horse of the year attention because uh, she did face males. Granted, it was a second. She didn't beat her her stable mate, O'Donagall, But, you know, she kind of took that step to try, um, you know, something outside the box for a three-year-old filly. And voters are going to have a, a choice with Flightline as a three-star horse this year. Um for year end honors. So um, I, I could see her getting some attention. Warlike goddess, I think would, would be in that boat as well um, with the win in the breeders cup. That'd be two races against males. So I, I think, you know, even with flight line for some a, a foregone conclusion, perhaps um, still has to do it, but there's some, there's some storylines for horses to, to run for uh, makes it fun. Definitely. Well, anything else that we need to discuss for our distaff preview? Mm, I am looking forward. This is part of like, you know, I talk about this so soon. There's things we don't know yet. I will be looking forward to seeing uh, the numbers on the TTT and things like that uh, for Keeneland for the mile and an eighth race. And, and they don't run a ton of nine for long races, but um, you know, there, there's certainly their share of two turn routes there. And, things are so forward like that, that alone might be the edge, you know, for um, whoever you think might get the jump uh, between the two Pletchers. Uh, neither is a need the lead type, nor is Clary air. Uh, but whoever makes the first move might be the one who wins. And I think that they will both end up being ahead of Clary air early. So that could, that could uh, certainly play into which one you want to go with. And if you close the book on secret oath, yeah, I mean, I don't, she needs a break. All right. Maybe she'll get it after this, but full steam <laughs> ahead for the coach. Uh, but his uh, protege, Todd Pletcher, holds the heavy hand. And uh, which race are we going to do next week? Uh, so many choices. Um, <laughs> maybe we should tackle a turf race. That's true. Yeah, turf, two year olds. So many options this time of year. And uh, not much time until the actual event. No, we're uh, we're at three weeks, uh, three and a half, I guess, from today. But three weeks from today, we'll be drawing the races or just have drawn. Uh, so lots of information to come. Pre-entries are uh, getting close as well. And we'll have a ton of stuff up at Horse Racing Nation. And, of course, for all you YouTubers out there, the way to stay on top of it all is to like and subscribe. Oh, you know they already have. Oh, well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we're getting close to 22,000. So that'll be a, a good number for the 22, 2022 Breeders' Cup. Sarah, I'm disappointed we are not going to Chipotle today. We're not? <laughs> You're in wherever you are. <laughs> wherever I am. <laughs> David Levitch said Chipotle is better than Skyline. I would have to agree. That's going to be one of our uh, top picks that we share together because <laughs> I'm, I'm totally with him on that one. Well, you know, we'll be on one of the Pletchers for the distaff. Of course. And honestly, I probably will be too, depending on what the rest of the field looks like. So yeah. um, I'm surprised though, that he did not pick Annapolis on top because he would have been right. And he would have, uh, th that was, uh, that was impressive. It was, that was a very yeah. good performance from him. Well, I don't need to tell you I'm not giving up on Ivar. Uh, ran better than I expected with his uh, pace compromised closing kick. So plenty of hope for you going forward. <laughs> Just need uh, modern games to run for purse money only and I'll be, uh, I'll be set. Anything is possible, right? <laughs> yeah, Breeders' Cup, you know it. All right, she's Sarah. I'm Ed. We're Horse Racing Nation. Like and subscribe. We'll be back next week. Actually, we'll be back later this week for uh, QE2 preview. But uh, the Breeders' Cup stuff will keep rolling next week. Thanks for joining us.